Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome to my new class uh, about the bio energetics and metabolisms. So today we will discuss about the bioenergetics. So this is the course curriculum. Core subject you we will cover uh, what is bioenergetics, bioenergetic metabolism, oxidation, electron transport chains, and many more. So electron carriers, biological redox reactions. So first of all, I'm going to define bioenergetics. So bioenergetics can be defined as uh, it is the part of biochemistry which is concerned with the energy involving making and breaking up chemical bonds in the molecule found in the biological systems. So in bioenergetics, we are studying about the different type of uh, energy uh, evolving process like the whenever there is formation of bonds or when these uh, chemical bonds they are broken down in the biological organism. So in another word uh, it can be uh, defined as uh, uh, so it is the study of energy relationship in energy transformation that how the energy is transferred from one form to another form. By energetics, it is referred to the transformation of energy that has occurred within living organism and transduction in the living organisms. So, in uh, simple words, uh, we uh, we can say that bioenergetics. This is simple. The convergence or the transformation of energy, uh, which is occurs inside the living uh, organism or living body and transduction in the living organism. This concept was for the first time suggested by a German uh, physician, J. R. Myers, who discovered the law of conservation and transformation of energy in 1841. Uh, that was his assumption that how the ATP molecule in the triphosphate so they are broken down and convert into different form like uh, let's suppose if ATP they are converted into ADP it means that more in so there is a continuous energy transformation is occur look at here this is ATP adenosine triphosphate this is adenosine and this is triphosphate three phosphate is present so this ATP is broken down and it converted into I don't know seen you can say uh, diphosphate so it means that uh, uh, here bond breaking uh, processes take place and energy is released so look at here so one phosphate uh, this is already released it means that ADP is formed so how the ATP molecule they are broken down look at here uh, and by energetics, uh, uh, we will differentiate. Uh, uh, this is uh, put up between uh, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Now, what is photosynthesis and cellular respiration? As we know that, as already we have studied these things in uh, class seven, eight, nine, ten. That uh, photo mean light and synthesis mean bending up. So, mean photosynthesis. This is the process in which the green plants can prefer their own food in the presence of sunlight. So, uh, these are the different type of chemical reaction which is take place. So, photosynthesis and photosynthesis the carbon dioxide and water molecule. So, they are mix ups along with energy and the glucose molecule. So, glucose is formed, glucose is formed while as a result of oxygen is released and then again. So, it means this is carbon dioxide and these are water molecules. So, it can react this is a balanced chemical reactions. So, here uh, these molecules they can broken down. So, after uh, bond breakings uh, along with energy, so glucose molecule they are formed, and after that, so it will also combine with so oxygen is also released here. While this again, this energy as uh, can be added with the uh, water molecule and carbon dioxide, so oxygen is formed and glucose molecule they are formed. Uh, it means that uh, these reactions they are reversible. This is respiration and this is photosynthesis and respirations you can say it is the process in which the organism broken down their food material with the help of oxygen and enzymes the result of certain amount of energy is released and that energy is in the form of glucose so it means that cycle in this process is continuous which is the one is photosynthesis second one is respiration so in respirations and respiration the carbon and respiration you can say the glucose molecules come 
combined with oxygen and they are converted into carbon dioxide and water molecule is a result of energy is released and now and photosynthesis here the reaction these are reversible so they are opposite of one another so in photosynthesis the carbon dioxide and water molecule so they are combined with energy and glucose molecule is formed but here the case is different but in this case the glucose is combined with oxygen molecule in it from carbon dioxide and water now these are different type of reactions so look at here this is androgenics and exergenic reaction so these are the peaks which is looking so what is the difference between androgenic and exergenic reaction so exergenic and androgenic reactions they are result in change in gaps free energy and exergenic reaction the free energy of the product is lower than the reactant so look at here these are exergenic reaction and exergenic reaction this is gaps free energy level and these are this is the time and how the, these are the reactants and these are the products that how the reactants they are converted into product species so let's see here so these are the reactant species and look at this peak so it mean uh, exergenic reaction they are usually spontaneously so they are occurred spontaneously and the energy is released when the energy is released so you can say in exergenic reaction the free energy of the product is always lower than the reactant so look at here uh, this so this is the exergenic reaction just uh, an exergenic reaction uh, this point is uh, this point to be noted that the free energy of the product must be uh, lower than the uh, you can say the reactant species uh, now in this case uh, uh, look at here this is gaps free energy uh, level and these are the reactant species so look at the look at the uh, peaks so i think there is a lot of difference so these are endergenic reaction here the energy is released so when the energy is released so after releasing energy so the quantity you can say the energy the free energy level of the uh, reactant species will be automatically so decrease because the energy is already released uh, during a chemical reactions while in this case the reaction is not spontaneous that's why the energy is absorbed here so when the energy is absorbed so automatically an endergenic reaction the free energy of the product will be always higher than the reactant species now what is the role of atp in metabolism and catabolism so simple uh, we will discuss about the role of atp adenosine triphosphate in anabolism and metabolism you know about anabolism and meta and catabolism first of all uh, metabolism this is you can say the type of chemical reactions or the chemical and physical breakdowns how the how the uh, different molecules so they are broken down and converted into uh, minute particles so here in this case one is anabolism and the second one is catabolism what is anabolism anabolism is called synthesis building up when there is formation of uh, some things formation of uh, different molecules in catabolism basically this is the destructive process anabolism is the constructive process atp is not only provide energy to your cell but it also allows anabolic process to occur so it means that atp they are um, as uh, we have study and uh, mitochondria which are called a powerhouse of a cell because there is there is called energy currency which produce a high quantity of energy anabolism is the reverse of catabolism since this reaction build up the large molecule from smaller ones and the molecule that are produced are the same types as what you find in the food such as carbohydrate and proteins so a normal balanced diet uh, so we are continuously uh, utilize uh, different type of molecules it may be in the palm of carbohydrates uh, proteins uh, lipids macronutrients micronutrients and then after these molecules they are built up and then how uh, then after that it become broken down and converted into uh, different uh, biomolecules you can say all these are biomolecules the catabolic reaction transformed during the fuel and cellular energy which is then used to initiate the energy requiring anabolic reaction so this point is also clear 
it whenever uh, whenever there is an abolism and abolic and catabolism reaction occur there must be occur you can say uh, changes in their energy level so atp is a high energy molecule which uh, couples the anabolism by release of free energy so as we have discussed in the previous sketch when the atp molecule they are broken down so it converted into adenosine diphosphate and then adenosine monophosphate so it means that the uh, free energy of the adenosine monophosphate energy is lower than adenosine diphosphate and then the adenosine uh, adenosine diphosphate energy will be lower than adenosine triphosphate so it means adenosine triphosphate adenosine triphosphate possesses high quantity of energy look at here this is very classical and simple example what is this these are large molecules so when this large molecule they are catabolized so when when the bond is broken down when these are let's suppose if you want to convert this is large molecule so this large molecule after catabolism after destructive process this large molecule is converted into smaller molecules and this energy is already it is look at here so here the breakdown process occurs this large molecule will broken down and converted into smaller one this is called catabolism while in this is what this is called synthesis of molecule so these are the smaller molecules which is called anabolism so anabolism basically it is the process in which the smaller molecule they are formed from the large molecule so these are the uh, classical examples of the so one is anabolism and the second one is catabolism so simple uh, this point is clear that why we are studying uh, about the bioenergetics because there is occur transformation of energy mean how uh, the how the number of reactant species they are converted into products and again the products are converted into reactant species now look at this chart atp couple energy between catabolism and anabolism so look at it these are atp adenosine triphosphate so it become converted into adp and plus you can say uh, plus uh, you can say that for example let's suppose this is adp and an organic phosphate so this is called anorganic phosphate so it become broken down and then again it into for example if you are going to add more phosphate to the adp so it form atp and here in this case the energy available power work and chemical cells for example moment signal amplification etc so they are occur during anabolism so this point is anabolism in anabolism there is occur the formation of you can say molecules the formation of molecules and you can say uh, as i have already uh, told about the uh, this in this case anabolism the large molecules so they are converted into mean the smaller molecule they are formed from larger molecule here the large molecule they are broken down or they become split up and convert into smaller molecules now what is biological oxidation reduction reaction so as we have already in uh, our previous lecture we have talk about the oxidation reduction reaction that what is oxidation what is reductions and after that we will uh, explain the electron transport chain that how the electron transformations can be occurs uh, and the change and how the energy how the uh, atp will be converted into adp and then atp into adp so biological oxidation reduction can be defined as an oxidation is defined as the loss of electrons in the course of chemical reaction after chemical reaction so whenever we are going to define oxidation oxidation can be defined in different way so oxidation is it is also called the loss of electron or gain of an oxidation state or you can say um, uh, removal of hydrogen from an atoms so if a species gains electron so it mean it is undergoing in reduction let's suppose so it is again it mean that the capability you can say uh, uh, as we have already discussed in electro negative electro negativity and electro positivity the same case is here so if a species gain electrons so it mean that it is going undergoing a reduction reaction since the electrons are concerns in a chemical reaction if they are not created or destroyed one the chemical process loss and other gain so this is a classic example of an old definition of oxidation is when iron combined with oxygen to form iron oxide or you can say rust so what the iron is said to be oxidized and to rust in the chemical reaction is it, this is iron and this is oxygen so this is the classical example of you can say in this case in this chemical reactions 
this point is clear so in this chemical reaction the iron you can say the iron is said to be oxidized into rust the iron metal is oxidized to form the iron oxide is known as rust rusting of iron is the classical example of now what is electron carrier so electron carrier in a simple word electron carrier can be defined as in cellular respiration there are two important electron carriers whenever there is uh, in, during cellular respiration the, there are two uh, important electron carrier which play a very key role without these electron carrier electron transport chain they are impossible so uh, the first one is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide which is abbreviated as a NAD plus in its oxidized form. So, during cellular respiration, so there are two important electron carrier. The first one is NAD. So, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide in its which is in oxidized form. The second one is what? The second one is flavine adenine, flavine adenine dinucleotide. So, flavine adenine dinucleotide it consists of riboflavin. So, as we know that there are different type of vitamin riboflavin it is attached to the adenosine diphosphate molecules while the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide it also contains coenzyme Q and cytochrome C flavine adenine dinucleotide abbreviated in FED flavine adenine dinucleotide in its oxidized form. As we know that electron carrier is a molecule, basically electron carrier it is a molecule which can transport the electron during cellular respiration. So, this point is clear that whenever and uh, during cellular respirations the electron transformation can be take place and that electron the electron carrier basically it can transport the electron during cellular respirations because during respirations the organism whenever we are going to inhale oxygen and then exhale carbon dioxide. So, the inhalation during inhalation and exhalation process these electron carrier the molecular transport the electron during cellular respiration. This is NAD nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide it is electron carrier used temporarily uh, stored energy during cellular respiration in the energy stored by the reduction reaction for example NAD plus N plus uh, H2 so when they are combined with each other so it form NADH plus hydrogen H plus so uh, inshallah in my next lecture I will uh, talk about the electron transport chain that how these how these uh, electron carrier uh, can be transported how how it can transport electrons from uh, from one part of the cell to another inshallah it will be discussed in the next lecture